Last year we sold our house and we packed all our stuff into storage. So I've loaded up the car, hooked on the camper and decided to go and see this beautiful country of ours. When we get back from our trip we want to buy our own small farm so we're hoping to be encouraged by the way others are growing their own food and loving it. We want to be encouraged by meeting new people and hearing their stories. And to top it all off, we're excited that we've got another little one on the way. So join us on our journey of being Wookiees on the road to becoming farmers. Hey guys, we're on our second leg of Tasmania, travelling along. We're finishing up the west coast in Granville Harbour and you got to stretch oh, the legs on the full wheel drive. That place was awesome, like right on the edge of the ocean. We camped at Granville Harbour and then we went along the, what's it called, the farm track? Yeah, top farm track. Totally fitting, top farm track. Along the coast. <laughs> and uh, we got to see some really cool rocks and I know that, that sounds a bit weird. I just think that like that kind of thing's really hidden. Like We didn't see anybody else on that track all day no. and you can only really access it by full wheel drive. And it would have been really easy to miss that had we not been just doing our own thing. Lucky I'm here. We're now tackling the farm leg of our Tassie adventure. We are at Mount Roland picking saffron. Something really unique and really different. Uh, not many people do that kind of thing, I suppose. So Stephen, who owns this um, saffron farm, he's the second largest producer of saffron in Tassie. He's got a huge mountain on his property, Mount Roland. So 72 years old and scaled the side of the mountain. He's a, he's a man. He's a man and we call him the saffron poet. <laughs> For very good reasons, when we're up on the hill picking saffron, he likes to uh, sling a bit of a rhyme together. Serenade us with a bit of a poem. Hit us with it, Stephen. <laughs> I'm just a saffron plucker. Plucking flowers is what I do the best. And on the days in which there's many purple flowers to pluck, it's the plucking little flowers that put me to the test. Evie got stuck into the hard work this week at the saffron farm. She was helping us pick up and down that hill all the time. Um, her and Stephen, you know, had a great time where Abby was actually in the wheelbarrow, sitting on the timber, wheeling it into the house and they brought it in and uh, put it in the fire and kept us all nice and warm. And Ev was really lucky to have a bit of a friend this week. So, um, Jamison, one of the young boys there that was helping pick the saffron, sort of took her under his wing. Yes. Showed her the big giant goats, latte and coffee, is that what Jamison, it's called? Yeah. It's cocoa and coffee. Cocoa and coffee, the Thank big you. goats. So the other character on the farm is Prozac the dog? Or yep, you heard they... right. Prozac. Prozac. So why did Stephen call it Prozac? Well in life apparently you either have a dog or you take antidepressants. <laughs> we don't necessarily agree with that but it made sense to us. So um, Stephen got Prozac from the, the pound as a rescue dog and she's just awesome. She was really good with Ev. It was really cool. Oh hang on a sec. I'm just ordering our Uber taxi at the Saffron Farm. <laughs> yes, there's an Uber taxi. It is the coolest rig ever. It's old, it's rickety, it's rusty. It's a Land Cruiser. Had me at first sight. Oh dear. So the Uber taxi takes us up to the top of the Saffron paddock so we can pick all the purple flowers. Nice and warm in Tassie. It's bloody freezing. I think I've got swapping hands. It's so red, it's going numb. <laughs> you and fingers don't mix, do you? So that's the picking part, and then you've got to come back down and do the plucking part and pull all the little orange stigmas out and then sit them on a tray so they can be dehydrated. Soft hands for plucking. <laughs> so I've milked a cow. Dean did about two seconds of plucking, which we did get on camera to make it look like he did some and he spent the rest of the time laying in front of the fire. My well, hands are still red and callous <laughs> from picking well, so much saffron. Well, everybody else plucked all the saffron. It's such a different experience just sitting around the table. And while that could be a really boring thing, sitting around the table plucking all the stigmas out, it was actually quite cool to sit around and talk to people that you've never met before. It's at the heart of what we're doing, you know, meeting people from the community and sitting around the table and actually having conversations and learning from them and yeah. hearing their experiences. So we pick the flowers, we pluck out the stigmas, and then we have all these purple flowers left over. The sheep eat them all. <laughs> so we chuck them out on the grass and then they just come in and gone. So while we've been traveling around Tassie, 
we've noticed that there's heaps of bees. And, so many bees. And we're not talking like just normal bees. These things are massive. They're like big, fluffy, and apparently they don't sting. Maybe they do, I'm not sure, but someone told us they don't sting. But they're good workers. Yeah. I've never walked around and had bees on me and not been worried. Like they didn't seem aggressive at all. They just kind of hung around. So Steve and I asked Debbie and I to sort of freshen up the veggie patch. So we pulled all of the weeds out and got it sorted out, ready for the next lot of seedlings to go in. He had a cracking little patch there too, didn't he? What did he have in there? He had pumpkins, he had potatoes. Carrots, Evie was pulling the carrots straight out of the ground, no washing, no brushing the dirt <laughs> off straight in the mouth. And we learnt that if you leave zucchini for too long, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And so Evie found this like giant zucchini. <laughs> so needless to say, we had a lot of zucchini on the farm. So this is Stone's Throw from the Saffron Farm at Mount Rowland. There's a little town called Sheffield. And at that town, they've got these cool murals that they've paint on, painted on the side of all the buildings in the town. So some of them look like, you know, you're walking into a shop front, but it actually isn't a shop front. There was a, a really great one where it was like a painting of a forest with like waterfalls. I think the waterfall was my favorite, actually. Yeah. So if you're ever around that area, you have to go there and check it out. Once a year, they actually have what they call Mural Fest, which is where um, artists from all over the world can submit a small version of the mural that they would paint in the town. And Stephen has actually bought some of the smaller versions of the murals. Yeah, and has too. They were in the back of his place. Yeah, and yeah. has them in his house, which was um, amazing to see that. It was quite incredible to see some original art that you know we, would, we wouldn't we would have seen if we hadn't yeah. you know, met up with Stephen and hung out at his place. So last stop on the Tassie tour, we went to Cradle Mountain, which isn't far from Sheffield. A pretty spectacular place to go and check out. They've got um, like a bus pickup service that picks you up at the top. Yeah. And then sort of drives you down the bottom of the valley. And you pull up and there's like a big lake with the mountain in the background. It's really picturesque. It's very picturesque. So some of the great things you can get up to when you're in Cradle Mountain is obviously going for a hike or a walk. So it's really set up for hiking. You know, they cater for a wide range of, you know, fitness levels. So you could be a little bit... Pregnant? <laughs> so we just did some of the shorter ones. And it doesn't really matter, you know, your fitness level, especially because you get the bus down there. Yeah. We visited the display centre there um, and we were able to take Evie in and show her lots of the um, native wildlife to Tasmania. The only Tassie devil we got to see in the whole of Tasmania was a taxidermied one. But it was cool for Ev to see it either way. Uh oh, on your left. And Dean's doing a good impression of the taxidermied Tassie devil. Stop you can stop now. <laughs> and we got to see a wombat up close. Got to give him a little cuddle too. And then we got to have a pat. Pretty relaxed character, wasn't he? And he was fine for or us she. to pat him. So we've really enjoyed our time in Tassie. Thanks but for having us, Tassie. Now we have to catch another ship again. Bob, Bob. <laughs> so now we're off back to do our Victorian leg of the tour. To the mainland. Back to the mainland and we're going to do our first farm to plate experience. So we'll catch you next week. See you guys. Bye.